Welcome to the Wata channel. I am Edsel Sudarya. In this video, we are going to learn about knot tying, splicing, knot construction, knot cutting, and knot mending together with Sir Roberto Tassin and Sir Ernesto Calderon. Let's go! Let us start with knot tying. A knot is a form of fastening when twines or ropes are looped and tightened on itself. In this section, we are going to discuss three types of knots. Stopper knots, bends, and hitches. Stopper knots are generally used to prevent the end of a rope to unravel. First is the overhand knot. This is the simplest knot and considered as the foundation of all fishing knots. The figure of eight knot. It is called that way because of the form it resembles. This knot is used to fasten a twine to a hook and tighten. The bowline knot is a simple and stable knot to create a fixed loop and attach a rope to an object. Meanwhile, the running bowlin is the running counterpart of the previous knot. This is used for hanging objects. With the stopper knots done, we will discuss the bends next. Bends are used to join two ropes to extend its length. Sheet bend is used to join lines of unequal diameters. This is also used in traditional fishing net construction, which will be discussed later. The double sheet bend is the reinforced version of sheet bend if it cannot cope with the unequal diameter of the lines you are trying to join. Next is the fisherman's knot. Unlike the sheet bend, this knot is used to join two lines of equal diameter. This knot is simply composed of two overhand knots pushed against each other. Lastly are hitches. Hitches are used to secure a rope to a post or a hook. The fisherman's bend, clove hitch, rolling hitch, timber hitch, snell knot, and improved clinch knot are hitches included in this video. The fisherman's bend is the most stable hitch used in mooring boats. It is also easy to perform. The clove hitch is also used in mooring, however, it is easier to perform and can be tied using one hand. Next is the rolling hitch, which is just a clove hitch with the first turn repeated. This is used for easy sliding when attached to a thicker rope. The timber hitch is a temporary hitch that are attached to poles and logs so that they can be dragged along, raised, and lowered. The snell knot is a type of hitch attached to an eyed hook to provide an even straight line pull when fishing. Lastly, the improved clinch knot is a type of hitch to tie a hook or swivel using monofilament lines. As you can see, this type of hitch is easy to tie and master. Splicing is also a means of joining two ropes together. However, this method is chosen over bends if you are planning to join ropes permanently. We will show you how to perform an eye splice, short splice, and back splice. To perform each splice, you must first unravel the three strands of your rope. You do not want to unravel each strand further. To prevent that, we will wrap each end of the strand with a tape. The eye splice is used to create a permanent loop at the end of a rope. Decide how big your loop will be. 
twist the body of the rope to create opening for the three strands. The short splice joins two ropes of equal diameter permanently. You will need to unravel two ropes and tape six strands before proceeding. Join these two ropes together and hold the middle firmly. Proceed on splicing both sides. Lastly, the back splice is used to permanently prevent the end of the rope from unraveling. Perform a crown knot, then proceed to the usual splicing. Fishing nets nowadays are already manufactured for faster production and distribution to fishing supply stores. However, have you ever wondered how handmade fishing nets are woven? In this section of the video, we will show you how to manually create your own fishing net. During our classes, we teach three types of knots of fishing nets, square knot, sheet bend, and double sheet bend. We will show you the construction of each of these one by one. We will introduce to you the materials that we are going to need. The polyethylene twine will be the composition of the fishing net. The netting needle will serve as our main tool to weave it. The flat bamboo stick is used as our guide to set the size of each mesh. Lastly, a nail attached to a hard surface will be used to hang our netting for ease of construction. To start, we must load the twine to the tongue of the needle. The loading ends if the twine wraps the tongue halfway. Should you run out of twine during construction, just connect the two ends using fisherman's knot. Then, we will create a loop at approximately this size and fasten it using the same knot we used to join the two ends of a twine. We will then hang this to our attached nail. We are going to construct a 10 by 7 mesh fishing net for each knot. This means that we are going to create 10 columns of meshes from left to right and vice versa and 7 rows of meshes from top to bottom direction. To achieve this, we must create a clove hitch repeated 10 times to our loop. Hold the bamboo guide firmly and pull tight so that our clove hitches would not run across the loop. We will create the meshes using square knot. There are several steps involved in each knot creation. We suggest to slowly follow how the left hand holds the bamboo guide and how the right hand uses the needle to create knots. Note the direction of creating meshes is from left to right, bottom, right to left, and repeat. The sheet bend is relatively straightforward to perform than the square knot. You might want to compare the sheet bend performed here to the previous knot tying video to confirm. If you have mastered sheet bend to create knots in your fishing net, the double sheet bend should be easier to achieve. Just follow the extra step shown here and you will be finished in no time. Repeat each knot to about 60 times more and you will have your finished hand weaved fishing net. Net cutting is essential when shaping a non-rectangular fishing net. An example of these are trawl nets. Trawl nets are created by combining two panels, top and bottom. The V-shaped panels are actually based on a concept called cutting rates. Cutting rates are a combination of vertical cuts called end cut, 
horizontal cuts called P cuts and diagonal cuts called B cut. In this section, we will perform net cutting using sketches first, then followed by the actual netting. Let's start. Here is a prepared sketch of a 10 by 7 netting panel. All end cuts should be done like this. The right part of your netting panel is discarded while the left part is retained. All T cuts should be performed like this. The bottom part of your netting panel is discarded while the top part is retained. Lastly, all B cuts should be done like this. The actual cutting for all T cuts, all end cuts, and all B cuts is easy. B cuts can be combined with either N or T cuts to create cutting rates normally used to attain the V shape of a trawl net. Some examples are 1N2B and 1T2B. 1N2B cuts are sketched like this and cut like this. while 1T2B cuts are sketched like this and cut like this. There are a lot of cutting rates depending on the desired shape of the netting panel. It can be as simple as 1N1B, to a more complex cut such as 1N4B plus 1N6B. All of these are driven by the desire to create the most hydrodynamically stable trawl net. Fishing nets are prone to breakage during fishing operations. After docking, it is common practice that municipal fishers repair their own nets laid along the beach. How do they do this? Through net mending. Net mending is performed by creating your own meshes similar to the net construction in the previous video. We will apply what we have learned in net construction and use the needle to repair a torn fishing net. This material that we are going to use are the needle, twine, bamboo guide, and a damaged fishing net. First, you must cut in complete meshes. Pick either the top right or the top left most corner of the net and attach the twine using a clove hitch. Proceed with the net construction with sheet bend using bamboo guide and needle to fill all the holes until finished. And that's it for today's episode on net tying and net maintenance. Let's learn together online, only here at the Wata channel. Goodbye! If you have questions or just want to share something about the topic, just comment down below. Like and subscribe. Bye!